I'm going to take you through a spreadsheet and a model that takes you through the Starlink business and try to put some numbers on it. The first step in that process is to figure out what does the business look like over the next four or five years? And I'm going to start with three major assumptions. We'll talk about customers, like how many customers will they have? They are now at about 7.6 million subscribers. Um, They've doubled that in the last year. That's a double from the prior year. They're targeting 20 million subscribers in 2030. So that's one key assumption. Second one is what's the pricing of each customer? And I'm going to assume that they're about 120 bucks a month for their customers. They have a bunch of pricing plans. You can see them on their website. They range from 40 at the low end to 300. The average like Xfinity customer or Verizon customer pays around 120 to 150. I, I know that from personal experience and you may know that in the Bay Area. Outside of the US, pricing plans are usually a little bit lower, but with business plans, they can be a little bit higher. So depending on how they scaffold the pricing for residences, for businesses, this could go up or down. And the last major assumption is profitability. If I just use market comps today, like Charter, 15 to 35% is probably the range for these satellite providers. SpaceX or Starlink is targeting 60% internally, but I'm going to go with a more conservative profitability assumption and we'll see where they take us. Any of that seem kind of wacky to you, Dave, or does that all seem reasonable? 20 million subscribers seems very reasonable given that they've been growing at 100% for the last couple of years. I, I wonder if they might even exceed that number in the next five years. $120 per month seems kind of manageable, I guess. That could also maybe grow a little bit. I don't know about the margins. That might be more optimistic, but all of those seem within reason. Well, that's perfect. That's what you want to start the model with. It's like, what is within reason? And then we're going to play with some of these different assumptions to see. So if I just start, let me share my spreadsheet. This is a discounted cash flow calculator for the Starlink business. It has probably about nine model inputs. You can make a very complicated model with hundreds of inputs and scenario analyses. And you maybe get a little bit more accurate, but I think this is a... 80, 20, like 20% of the work gets you 80% of the value and the, and the valuation scenarios. And you can see what you have to believe in order to build Starlink at a 350 to $400 billion valuation, which by itself will justify the current SpaceX business. All these yellow cells are cells that you can go in and, and put your own numbers in. So you can put in the number of subscribers. Today they're at 7.6. You can look at the ARPU, the average revenue per user that's based on their pricing. You can also look at their current revenue, which will, that's the, the revenue is going to calculate from the number of subscribers and the pricing. You may want to override that if you want to. You can throw in an EBITDA margin and all these yellow cells. And then I've got some toggles here up top where I'm just going to get the, the growth rates. Now, the fun part of this model okay. is see what really matters to the business. So let's assume that you thought, you thought, Dave, everything seems reasonable. 